We always look forward to spending some time with this guy. He yes, is the director of morale for the Chicago Cubs, a guy you need to be following on Twitter. Follow him on, on Instagram as well, but over on Twitter, at Dom underscore Frederick. Dom, how are you this morning? I'm doing great. Thanks again for having me. It's snowing right now, but uh, spring training back officially, and it feels really good. It does. Uh, you're, you're on the road. I, I, we saw you had to dig your car out of the snow the other day. Uh, you did yeoman's yep. work for that. Uh, clear sailing this morning? Yeah, clear sailing. You didn't mention I did it by hand. Oh, so uh, <laughs> I was a warrior that day, 16 inches. But you know what? Whatever momentum we need to get us going into spring training, like I said, I'm willing to do that and carry the load. You have done it all. You have uh, rolled up a sleeve to lead the way for others. Thank you. Yeah, how's that, how's that vaccine going for you right now? You know, I'm feeling good. I got the second one scheduled in about, I don't know, less than a month. So, again, like I've been saying, I'm going to do whatever is necessary. I think no one's proven me otherwise that I was indeed the first person in the organization to get the vaccine, being a leader, uh, uh, men for other, uh, man for others. But you know what? Uh, I'm not here for thank yous. And like I said, we're, we're trudging forward into spring training. The game's going to be coming soon enough. How happy are you about the Church of Jake officially signing and reopening? I'm fired up. I mean, uh, I think a lot of people are saying, well, we got Jake in spite of uh, John, John Lester Reams, you know, going by the wayside and having to go to the Nationals. I understand that argument. I get it. But I think the reality of the situation is, is Jake in a vacuum is a great fit for this team right now. It makes sense financially. Um, when you look at his stats, when you look at the peripherals, his velocity is still around 93, so it's not like he dropped all the way off to like 89 like John Lester was. No offense to him. And I think there's a great opportunity for him to fill that fourth spot in the rotation, four, five, maybe three. I don't know. A lot of people might be pushing with that. Um, but overall, he's going to be a great leader for this clubhouse. Everyone has talked about over the years, whether it was a, a, besides all the, the literal Jesus Christ performance that he had going back to 15. 16, 14 as well. People forget how great he was in 14. The main thing around Jake Arrieta was his work ethic, the yoga, the Pilates, the weightlifting, how he changed his whole body and mindset around as a professional athlete. Athlete, And that's very crucial for a guy like Burt coming up who has to be a key part of this rotation for years to come. And if you can have a right-handed pitcher with maybe the same uh, pitching profile like Jake has comparable to Adbert, he's going to be a great mentor. And for me, that's one of the unsung things that I think is going to pay dividends in the long run, especially if Jake can get his, I don't want to say get his confidence back, but feel comfortable again, something he probably didn't feel in Philadelphia. So I think it's a win-win for everyone. It's a one-year deal with a second-year option. It's $6 million bucks for year one. I mean, this is a great deal. So, again, I'm not saying he's going to be a world beater like he was in 14 and 15, but there's not a whole lot of negatives here, and I think a lot of Cubs fans should be excited about it. Not to be a, a negative about the signing or anything, but uh, you, you, do you see if if he does come out and and has uh, in, in his in is a good pitcher, something uh, you know reminiscent of what he was before? Is this trade bait uh, for the Cubs, or are they looking for you know a piece to fly, flip for for a couple prospects coming up? That's a great question. I think you know it really depends on where we're at as a team. I mean, the reality of the situation is we're obviously in the time of transition. If we are in July and we have a lot of players playing well, but we don't necessarily have the extensions to back it up, like we haven't been able to sign Rizzo, Javi, maybe Chris. I mean, those would be some pretty uh, those would be some pretty tough times for a fan because you're like, well, who's on the team right now? And then you're going to feel like everyone's trade bait, and that's not really a place you want to be at as a fan. Is which is why I've been so adamant about the fact that extensions are necessary right now. It should have happened over the offseason. I'm hoping this tune changes and we can start negotiating with guys, but um, we'll see. I guess, I guess it all goes back to, again, who's playing well, and then really, what do we have going forward? Because right now, we don't have all that much because of guys being on their walk here, so we'll have to see. Uh, if you're just joining us, we're spending some time with the uh, director of morale for the Chicago Cubs, guy you should be following on Twitter, at Dom underscore Frederick, the guy who is so plugged in, knows all, and is willing to share all because he's taking it on his back to haul us all across the finish line and keep our spirits up when, you know, it's been very tough this year.
Yeah, you're, you're doing you're doing a, you're doing a great job, Dom. And I and I thought of you, imme- you. immediately yesterday uh, when the Cubs announced that uh, Pedro Strope coming. We got got the spring training invite. Uh, he's when you posted the uh, the John Lester Reams uh, uh, video when he's when he's holding uh, all of John's World Series rings. I think that's when I first kind of you came on my radar when 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 that was going around. Is was Pedro kind of the one of the first morale athletes that, that you remember? So here's how it works. Pedro isn't necessarily a morale athlete, but he is morale, if that makes any sense. Some listeners might get confused. More or less, the reality of Pedro is he is optimistic, he has great energy, he's funny, and then he was a great player for the Cubs. And I think a lot of people get confused at the fact that I gravitate towards people, not necessarily for their performance, but for their actions, for their personality, so on and so forth. And Pedro is a perfect example of that. So the reality of the situation is I'm – incredibly excited for him to be back it's a it's another like low risk move but i find it funny all the time when you're talking to cardinals fans or you're maybe talking to Bruce fans they're always talking about culture like yadi this you know again jesus christ like figure well he's actually god i'm sorry um when you're speaking to a cardinals fan and it's all about oh the culture the uh work ethic the leadership you know why can't we say this same thing about Pedro Strope if he comes back on the team and he makes the roster. Why can't we say the same thing about Jake Arrieta? I, I find it very interesting and convenient to when uh, specific fans or media members make that argument but don't want to make the same thing for the Cubs. But, um, again, I'm super excited about it. Pedro's awesome. John Lester Reams, uh, hats to the left, the whole deal. And hopefully he can come back, find that fastball, and then maybe even be some type of piece for this bullpen moving into 2021. How do you feel about uh, how Jed Hoyer's, you know, address the the media, address the public? It just, it used, it, I felt transparency with with Theo, and I don't necessarily feel that with Jed. Uh, you getting the same vibe? Yeah, I think that's really fair, and it's not a knock to Jed. I don't want to try to. I'm I'm not trying to make any enemies, but when he says that the Cubs aren't going to trade Chris Bryant, I don't believe that at all. I think they have been trying to find a way to make a deal work for the last two years, maybe three years. And unless I hear otherwise, I'm going to stick by that. It's nothing against Jed. I just think he's in a really tough situation. And I've even argued against the fact that we've been dangling Chris Bryant and Contreras out there for so long. It just makes this this weird feeling with the fans and the organization that you don't really want to be in overall. So, I mean, what I've been told and what I keep hearing is that I know fans aren't going to like this, but these front office members for the Chicago Cubs are shrewd and have been described as savages when negotiating deals right now. That could be part of the limitations Ricketts have put on them, or just in general, the fact that, and I might have talked about this last time, the fact that over the years, I mean, you go through all the free agent signings, there was a lot of bad ones. And I don't know if uh, Jed was like maybe learning from those mistakes, or if he's maybe the guy during the, the tenure of this Cubs reign that we've seen that was maybe like, you know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to be spending on guys in their late 20s into their 30s because we might not get the, uh, the uh, reward for the uh, contract that they signed. That very well may be the case and why they might not have extended a guy so far. So I hope that changes. I'm totally fine with Jed making the best move for the decision, but I think there are many moves that are out there right now, specifically on this team, that if you extend Anthony Rizzo, that makes the team better. If you extend Ian Happ, that makes the team better, so on and so forth. I'm not looking for everyone to be extended, but we have to get at least a few guys, at least one, at least one extended, so we can really move forward here. You've been, uh, as I mentioned, carrying all of us on on your back while we've been despondent about some of the moves the Cubs have made, uh, you know, and worried about the future. But, uh, you know, once again, we, we lean on your armor to get us through all that. How is the morale amongst the guys who are actually going to take the field? That's a great question. I know, again, not to name any names, I think guys are really excited. I think guys are really excited. I was, te- I was, I mean, I, I text throughout the offseason with guys, whether it be a move for Jack or a move for Trevor Williams, Jake, so on and so forth, so forth. And they're pumped up. I mean, I think, I mean, not, not to rat anyone out, but I think the Cubs, I think the Cubs, the actual Cubs know that they're in a tra- time of transition and that they would like to have things figured out for themselves because the reality is, is, of it is that it's their career and they want to, you know, get a contract extension, right? Or know if they're not going to get uh, the opportunity to negotiate with the team 
that that he'll have an option with another team, so on and so forth. So, but with that being said, I think it's very clear that this division is very winnable. I know Arenado's on the Cardinals. I know you know people might say that well, this division isn't that very isn't very good to begin with. I think Nolan Arenado is kind of like the tipping point between whether or not people are going to take this division seriously or not, especially if he plays really well. But overall, even if he does, I still think the Cubs are a real player in this division, and I believe it's important for us fans to understand that during a time of transition, granted, we're one of the charter franchises, one of the most valuable franchises in all pro sports, and we have the opportunity to compete for a division while we don't know who's going to be on the team, when we have all these guys entering free agency, so on and so forth. So the Cubs are excited. I'm excited. We should all be excited. And when you have the opportunity to win an NL Central for the second time with these players in front of these fans, hopefully everybody's in the federal landmark soon enough, and beat up on the Cardinals, the Reds, the Brewers, that's something we should all look forward to, and specifically myself. That, that fires me up, and if it doesn't, then you can go to the library. Fire. <laughs> fire, fired up. You can, Joe. You I, I, can, Riley. I get it. I get it. Um, uh, you're doing a great job with the Cubs. I know in this offseason uh, you, you, you focus some of your attention uh, specifically on the Bears uh, in, in, in recruitment of, mm. of Deshaun Watson. Uh, have, you, have you made any progress on getting, getting him to Chicago? You know, I'm trying. I'm trying my hardest. I mean, it, it's tough when you're not getting as much news. I feel like he's been kind of in the... Uh, background or on the back burner recently we're hearing a lot of one stuff you know jj watt has obviously come up on every chicagoans radar i've said it before i've been very public about it whatever i need to do i'm not saying i'm the biggest bears fan or football fan of all time i mean i literally direct the morale for a major league franchise 365 days a year 24 7 but if i need to add an extra you know piece of work onto my plate an extra Whatever it is, I got to recruit. I got to be Urban Meyer. I got to be Nick Dick, whatever. Then I'll, I'm willing to do it for this city because I've said it before. I worked for the Morale family. I worked for the Chicago Cubs. And I work for anyone who's part of the city of Chicago. Uh, so whatever has to be done, I'll do it. And uh, hopefully we can get a little bit more promising news on the Deshaun front so I can get that going a little bit more. How excited are you about seeing some spring training baseball actually on TV coming up soon? Fired up. I mean, I'm someone, and I know, I get it. I get it that people aren't uh, maybe as excited about Marquee, considering WGN's gone the whole day. I, I get it. You got to pay extra, whatever. All I'm saying is, is trust me, the people at, Mar uh, at Marquee are a bunch of people who are part of the morale family. And if you like me, and if you appreciate what I do, then you will eventually appreciate what they do because they're all about morale. And I'm someone who is rooting for them regardless of who's there. I'm fired up about Boog. I've said it before. It's uh, great. I think he, he's awesome. And, again, it's going to be awesome to see these guys compete out there. This, this month is going to go, or this month and a half is going to go incredibly fast. And before we know it, we're going to have, uh, you know, spring training or actual baseball here in the city of Chicago if we get out of all this snow, but it's supposed to warm up soon. And for everyone to know, I'll be here in the city, in this town. I'm not, I'm, no offense to the people that go over to Arizona, but I'm not living that country club lifestyle, getting out. I'm, I say it for a reason. I'm not leaving. I'm still here. So, again, I'll be waiting for when the team comes back from their little country club run. Uh, where it's 80 degrees out, and it might, they might start complaining when it gets to like 60 in the middle of the night. But whatever, I'm here, I'm excited, and everyone really should be to have a chance to go after this division again. Getting the uh, getting the official morale designation is, is a big moment in anybody's life. You you did give us uh, our uh, 1440 DeBarro K, the, uh, the morale radio station dedication. We really appreciate yeah. that. Yes. Uh, that was big. I wonder, you mentioned Book Skiambi. I'm very excited about Book Skiambi. Is he officially part of the morale team yet? Is, there, is that on the, the horizon? You know, well, kind of going back to my, what I was saying originally, I maybe need to be a little bit more clear or designated. There are five morale athletes, and really to be a morale athlete is uh, I make that executive decision. It's not saying that uh, Boog isn't part of the morale family yet, uh, but he's not a morale athlete or a morale broadcaster. You, you have to go above and beyond to do that. And, um, but we'll see. Like I said before, I'm super excited. He seems like a down to earth guy, and everything I've been told about him, guys that are, I mean, when he, I know I said this last time, when he was hired, 
I got so many DMs and messages from people that knew him personally and was like, you're going to absolutely love him as a fan, listening to his broadcast, everything he brings to the table. No offense to Len at all, but I think Boog might bring a little bit more personality, a little bit more, uh, how would I say it, like your everyday guy into the broadcast booth, which is something I appreciate, specifically considering I've made the argument in the past that I think with Marquis, one of the decisions, one of the decisions they uh, struggled with early on was that they needed to have a better understanding of the people that they were actually talking to, the people that were paying for their product, the people that were watching them on a daily basis. This isn't an East Coast, Long Island type of vibe. This isn't a corner office type of vibe where you put guys in the suits. Like I understand the expectations are high here, and Theo brought that uh, upon this fan base and this organization, but overall... Every Cubs fan knows this is kind of – when you're at Wrigley Field, it's a party. It's good vibes. It's laid back. You know, you're in the bleachers. You're feeling – I mean, it's a relaxing place. And to have guys – again, maybe I'm over the top. I don't think I am. But to put those guys in those suits after they were just working together for 14, 15 years and say, well, this is how we're going to do things now. No, 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 no. That's not how it works here. How it's been done here is a, literally a century worth of tradition – here in Chicago, and you got to understand the people you're talking to and the people that pay to keep Marquis on the, you know, on the broadcast and, you know, to broadcast for the Chicago Cubs. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited for Marquis. I'm excited for Boog, and I think it's going to be a great fit. I think everyone's going to enjoy it in the long run. I'm all jazzed up. That's good stuff. Let's go, man. <laughs> Let's go. I'm out here. I'm out here driving in the snow here. Not in Arizona. Here, getting ready to, hey, whatever I have to do, whatever I have to do to build morale, going into spring training, that's what I'm going to do. The, the players are going to be coming, like the position players are going to be coming back very soon. And I'm telling you, once they start taking videos of Javi hitting balls 500 feet, I don't see why we can't win a World Series. I love, I love your optimism, Fred. Yeah. I'm telling you what, it, it's, you. it was just a shot in the arm I needed right. this morning. It was yeah, good. I will admit my spirits have been flagging a little bit here and uh, a little bit of time spent with Fred. Uh, my morale is right back up to where it needs to be. You're good. Uh, have, have a safe trip to, uh, on the rest of the day to work today, all right, bud? Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a great day, everyone. I, I really appreciate you for having me on again. Looking Thanks. forward to having you back, pal. Always look forward to Thanks. it. There's our pal Dom, director of morale for the Cubs. Dom Fred uh, does a great job. Follow him on Twitter. Follow him on Instagram. The guy is everywhere.